But first, it's one of the state's most enduring mysteries. What happened to Stephen Williams? This Sunday marks the anniversary of the day the state's most high-profile bikey vanished. Tonight, his daughter and former partner speak, 10 years on, what they've never revealed before. It's hard because, like, someone normally dies. You can... you have, a, a like, a funeral and somewhere to go and it's done, it's finished. But um, with this, there's no finish. Yeah, it doesn't get easier every year and stuff. I hate getting upset. <laughs> do you still think about him? Yep. What do you think? Where he is. Where his body is. It's probably nearly gotten worse in some ways as I've gotten older and not better. Adelaide is known for its mysteries, but one cold case stands out from all the others. Not because it was a shock, but because the victim wasn't just well known, he was infamous. I think it's about six to eight weeks now we've been regularly in, in the news. Stephen Williams didn't tread the predictable path. The son of a maths teacher at one of Adelaide's most elite schools, his mother was a nurse, his brother became a fireman and his sister a lawyer. He, however, chose the life of an outlaw. But even there, he rebelled against the norm. As president of the Gypsy Jokers, he clashed with police. But he also clashed with his own kind, attempting to open up the Gypsy Jokers Club to the outside world, inviting the media inside the normally secretive world of an outlaw motorcycle gang. An ambition he didn't get to complete once he was voted out as president after more than two years at the helm. His appeal to the media gave him almost celebrity status. Here, chosen to give away Australia's best-known brothel madam, Stormy Summers, at her very public wedding. So how, then, did a man with such notoriety, a big man who would turn heads wherever he went, get out of a car right here, ten years ago this Sunday, and simply vanish? Blaze Williams was just a 13-year-old schoolgirl when her dad disappeared. Perhaps it wasn't a shock to many that a notorious bikey had gone missing, but to her, it was. She'd never seen her father's dangerous side. I don't even think he ever yelled at me. Like, <laughs> I can only, I probably only have one memory of him actually telling me off, and um, I got upset because obviously a guy yelled at you, and, and he came straight in and said sorry, and like freaked out that I'd got upset. She was no bikey's brat. In fact, her upbringing was closer to that of a princess. It was all ponies and presents. A lot of ones I remember is um, playing in the swimming pool when I was a kid. So um, we'd go to the, say, Clark Rubber or somewhere, and rather than getting one pool toy, I'd get every single pool toy that I wanted. And <laughs> her horse, Homer, one of the last living links she has to her father, he was a present from Steve. But that isn't to say it was a normal childhood. There was danger. She just didn't realise it. You'd sometimes have to go to safe houses. Well, at the time, we never knew. It was just like we thought we were going to somewhere for, like, a party or a trip or something like that. It was a relationship Blazer's mother, Kim, couldn't remain in. Why did you leave him in the end? You were... There was a fear, wasn't there? What was that fear? Um, he used to have nightmares that Blazer would be hurt or someone would take Blaze to get back at him for repercussions, I guess, for things maybe that he fights and that he's had over the years. And I got to the stage where I just couldn't stand it anymore. So what happened to Adelaide's most high-profile bikey? It's interesting you say that. He's not a missing person. He's dead. I think he is. Do you think your dad is still out there somewhere alive? No. You don't. And you can't be gone 10 years and still be alive. Like, he's not one of those people that would have had, say, like a random second family or anything like that. Like, he would have contacted me by now. Even if it was him being in danger or me being in danger or something, he, he still would have made contact by now. Knowing where he is now is more important than knowing who killed him. I mean, of course you want to know who did it, but then as well, I don't know if I do. Like, I just want to have the body. That's all I want. Like, I don't care about the rest of it. I, um, yeah, if I, if I got to have the remains and 
have that closure, I wouldn't care about the rest. Kim and Blaze have no doubt Stephen Williams was murdered, most likely by someone he knew, even trusted, because he would have fought to the death if he had seen it coming. What do you think has led to his demise? I honestly think that it was some sort of personal issue with someone. The fact that there was no blood or any sort of violence found around his car, there's much to believe that he went with someone that he knew. Because if someone did come to try and take him from the car park at the pub where his car was found, he would have fought till his death to not go with him. So he's obviously been taken somewhere. So you think he's been betrayed by a friend? Yeah. Do you think it was someone from the Gypsy Jokers? No. You think it's someone else he the, used? The Gypsy Jokers, uh, they've helped us out immensely since he's been gone. I used to think maybe it had something to do with the Beachport staff and police and things like that because he was against a lot of them. Then I used to think a lot to do with the pedophiles that he was having, like, trying to get un like covered and things like that and because they are so wound up in high up networks and things like that and then I've also heard like stories about maybe other bikey gangs um it doesn't ever cross my mind that it'll be the jokers like that's never ever slipped into my mind at all today they both have a prime suspect a bikey but from another club so I've got my thoughts I'm pretty certain but I can't share because you're afraid yeah. Evidence, however, is the problem. And no body is not just frustrating for Blaze and Kim, but investigators too. What about if the person who did it told you, I did it and this is where he is, you'll never see the remains, would that be enough? Yeah, well, I, I suppose it, well, you can only have one or the other, it's better than nothing, but the ideal for me would be to have the remains out of everything. But after 10 years, I don't even think that's not really a reality anymore. For investigators, the problem is there are so many with motives. Steve Williams went looking for trouble, whether it was with the infamous Beachport Hotel brawl with police, which he was being sued civilly for by injured police officers, or as a security guard at Stormy Summers Brothel, or as a loan shark and debt collector. Being where we are now, because of what's happened, do you regret ever being with him because of this? I still would never change anything. I had some of the most fond memories of my life. And we got Blaze. You know, she's my world too. And considering her childhood, Blaze has done her parents proud. She's a national horse riding champion. She's like her dad, very strong. When she was younger, we used to laugh because she was very good at school. And sometimes I'd say to her, have a day off with mum and we'd go shopping. And she'd be, no, no, I've got to go to school. So we'd laugh and say that she was rebelling against her parents and doing the opposite by wanting to go to school. Um, and, yeah, she is him. A very strong-willed, strong woman, really. It's a woman now. But deep down, she's just a little girl who misses him and wants to make him proud. I think you'd be proud of everything I do. Um, I drive trucks and I drive semis, so I, I love that and think it's cool. And I guess, well, even actually the whole Williams family, we've always been different. 